Hi, I'm Mike. I'm going to tell you a little bit I know about building cob today. So for building cob, uh, the materials that I like to use are sand, clay, and some sort of fibrous material like straw. Today I have some grass that I got out of a wetland. It was sort of dried out. Uh, it's real strong fiber. So right here off the land. So what I did is I got some sand, uh, just regular builder's sand, and I got some clay that I uh, you know, took also from the site. I'm going to mix this in together as best as I can. It's a very labor-intensive process, lots and lots of uh, moving around. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I don't want it to be too soupy. It's a real, it's a real learning process. You have to figure out what ratio of clay to clay to straw you need, what ratio of you know how much water. Because if it's too soupy, then it won't stay. If it's too uh, dry, it won't clump. You know, if there's too much clay, it'll it'll uh, flake off. Um, you know, these sorts of things. The clay helps absorb the water, and the sand, of course, doesn't. Um, the clay I'm using right now is a bit wet as well, so it looks like I'm going to have to use a much higher percentage of clay and sand for this particular mix. Uh, mixture. Yeah, mixture. Really fun is to uh, do this on a hot summer day with your feet. In a lot of traditional cultures, they also use uh, manure instead of clay, um, which doesn't necessarily smell because you use the you know, fermented stuff. That doesn't. And you need, you want to make sure you break up all your clay balls, uh, so that you have a good mixture. But it'll be high out. Okay, now at this stage I have it pretty much broken up as best as I can get. There are some rocks in here that doesn't it's gonna be hurtful on your hands and feet, but it's not really hurtful for the building process. Unless of course you're doing a finished interior or something like that where you want it to look nice which you can do. You can use finer and finer clay and finer and finer sand and get a really nice plaster going. Um, you know, after you do your structures. Now the reason why I put it on a tarp is because I'm gonna do this process and then you can I'll share this process and you can do it with one person uh, without it really affecting the quality of your work. Uh, this, is a, this is a technique my brother picked up. And he showed me when we built the oven. I have in my house. So, again, I have some, uh, some fibrous material. We want this to be coated. We also want there to be a good amount of mixture all over it. Again, you're going to do this in a larger chunk. I just did a small quality to quantity today. But if you had a larger thing, you'd have a like probably a football-shaped size about this big that you could put a lot of building out of little handfuls. So I just have a smaller size, so I, this isn't really necessary. This mixture of technique for what I'm doing. But I'd like to show it anyway. The straw gives it uh, strength, uh, that's a good question, the straw gives it strength to hold it together. What this actually does is the, the cement uh, almost forms like a cement-like bond between the sand and the clay. 
and, but that has some fragility. Uh, it'll sort of break apart. It doesn't have a high tinsel strength. So what you do is you coat all of these fibrous materials that are very strong. I tested this grass beforehand. I couldn't even break it with my hand uh, until it got wet. And this will keep, once this is all interwoven in together, it'll form a very, very strong bond. And this will form almost as strong as concrete if you keep it in the right conditions. I do have a little bit more fibrous material in here, but like I said, it's a, it's a learn and go process. I'm going to put this on this board for this little display that we're going to do. Maybe I'll try to take a little bit out. Try to keep some of my mud. Again, if I would have had my choice on this project, as we learn and go, um, I'll use the probably a little bit finer sand, but this should hold up. So the reason why it's called cob is the cob is actually the unit of what you're doing. You're going to form this little ball like this. Here's my little ball. And you're going to sort of slap it in place wherever you're building it. Now you can, one technique is to form a whole bunch of these little balls and then smooth over with a plaster. Uh, I also like to you know, form the ball and then smooth. And that way you have a real congruent building. These almost form, you know, the bricks, and I like to sort of connect them together when I build with them so that they, uh, so they connect together. Again, I'm getting into a nice rounded shape, blotting it down. If you were building a structure, would you do one layer and let it dry and then do the next layer after that dry? You wouldn't um, put another ball on top of those two? I find that uh, I can do a, a maximum, usually four layers before it dries. So you could do four layers right now mm -hmm. and then let it dry and then do four more layers? Yeah, what I'll probably do is I'll probably do um, four layers on the bottom and three layers on top of it if I have enough material just to show uh, you know, it does, can build up in height. And again, you can use bigger chunks, you know, and, you know, come out further and, you know, it is a time intensive, but this is, these materials cost me nothing, no money whatsoever. Um, you know, cob walls, they make cob houses still in England. Um, you know, they last a couple hundred years. They have a high, um, a very high uh, uh, mass so that they uh, retain the energy very well can also help knock down your energy costs. See, I just needed that extra straw. I just needed to get everything mixed in a little bit better. subtracting until you get the right consistency. There you go, there's my little wall, it's the cob that I have. I'm going to smooth this side to show you that process. And you say, just go over this, you can use a trowel if you want. Um, and we'll compare that side when it dries to the other side, which I left sort of bulky. So, it's just the way I prefer. Smooth this in Thank you. You folks have a nice day.